Hey, y'all. Thanks for being here and listening. It's Ashley. Lots of love and many blessings your way. I had some things happen to me as a as a child and teenager, very young teenager, and I always kind of felt that God had turned his back on me. Yet, uh, because I was raised in a fire, hell, and brimstone sort of household, and, you know, my mom has since apologized. I don't hold her uh, at fault for such uh, religious extremes. If you even thought about it, you were going to hell or being punished. Even at 14, I was struck by lightning indirectly, and I just knew that was something from what I had done at school or in my life. That was just my train of thought, my mindset. That being said, fast forward to when I was 16, I became pregnant with my oldest son, who's now 26. I have three children, three boys, 26, 21, and one's almost 16. Anyhow, I figured I was definitely going to get punished uh, by God for having premarital sex, buddy. So, I had just graduated the high school, and I had enrolled in freshman year of college. I had received all my books, and I was sitting on top of my bed after Gavin had just gotten out of the hospital. And I was forcing myself to stay awake because I was so afraid that God was going to punish me by taking my child via SIDS. That's all it was ever told to me at the OBGYN was all about SIDS. And I just knew, because I had been a bad girl, that God was going to take this child that I loved better than anything in the whole wide world. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I can't even fathom life before my son. Ugh. Flipping through my school books, just out of, just randomly, it was like 11, 11.30 at night. The end of my bed in my room lit up this ginormous figure okay ginormous and the light coming off of this was like if you put your eyeball next to the sun but it did not burn or make me squint i could see the form of this man he was huge and beautiful anyhow i didn't see the the guy's face i just seen his form and he said to me he stretched a hand towards gavin and a hand towards my bed and he said don't worry about everything's going to be okay don't worry about gavin gavin's going to be okay and just that quick it was gone i could not believe it the voice sounded just the most beautiful noise i've ever heard in my life i can't even describe it to be honest it was not male and it wasn't female it was just beautiful and i went and woke everybody in the house up because my parents were asleep my brother was on the front porch with a friend of his and i went out and told them and went and woke my mom up and my dad and told them and i made this huge deal out of it because it was a huge deal and from that moment on i never did worry about my kid he's prevailed at everything he's done all three of my sons have as a matter of fact praise god fast forward to 2011 gavin graduated a dual program where he received a degree and he wanted uh, with his diploma he wanted to come up to north carolina where my parents had retired air force and went back to their hometown right right outside of charlotte he wanted to go to a private college and um at first my husband and i were going to send him you know to go stay with my parents so he could go to school blah 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 well me being the uh you know, Thelma Harper that I am, if you haven't seen Mama's family, I am Mama. Anyhow, so I couldn't fathom being away from my son like that. So my husband transferred his job and here we moved. Florida is everything to me. I was born and raised uh, on the beach, fishing on the bayou, shining spotlights at gators. It was all I've ever known. I loved it. We went to Germany for a short period of, of time, a few years. Uh, as a as a child growing up but you know it didn't have my heart florida has my heart to, even to this day i miss it so much so we were deciding in 2013 let's you know gavin was done with that leg of the race it was time to move on to further his uh, education we talked him into going to florida state and i said let's go we packed up we were due to move that month well i was sitting in the library waiting on my middle son to get out of junior high school or I think he was in high school, his first year of high school. And so I was waiting on him. When somebody approached me out of the blue, this is how I know everything happens for a reason. 
They offered me a job out of my career field. I'm a hairstylist by trade. A school teacher turned hairstylist, mind you. Anyhow, um, out of my career field, but they offered a starting wage. It was unreal. And I said, my gosh, I can't afford not to take this job. So I went home and talked it over with my husband. We ended up changing our plans, staying put, and I took this job. And that's when all hell broke loose. My first week at this great job, learning the ropes, getting paid more money than I'd ever received in my life, especially for something I had no knowledge, I had no experience in. I couldn't even believe my good luck. I met a girl named T. T and I became the best of friends really, really quick. I was super depressed. I couldn't stay in North Carolina, no offense. I was homesick for Florida. Uh, my marriage was stale. I was just in a funk. I was mad at God for quite a few reasons. Um, I guess I never clearly shook that. She decided one day to say to me, hey, I can make the, the line break, watch. And I thought she was kidding. And when the line broke, it meant, you know, up to an hour of a break for everybody working. Next thing I know, a few minutes pass, and I hear the line alarm going off. We're outside laughing it up, and I thought, well, you, I said, well, what'd you do, put a tool in it or what? She said no, and the next couple of days after that, she handed me a couple of books on witchcraft and spell casting. Being in the funk that I was in and kind of angry at God anyway from just my past, I dove head, head first into it. I got so good with all of it. I was so loyal and faithful. God, he couldn't get my attention. But leading up to that, I wanted to say, I always prayed a, a prayer I began praying, adding certain things to my prayer, and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And I would say, God, please keep a grip on me because evil is much stronger than I am. I ended up leaving my husband. We separated. Me and the boys went and got a really cute house. I bought a really cool car. We had more money than, you know, I'd ever had before. Everything was going great. I had a social life. I looked better than I had since high school. Um, I was happier than I had ever been, if I hadn't mentioned that already, I was. Um, everything was going great, and I was, like I said, I was spell casting. I had an altar set up in my dressing room. I had, um, you name it, I had it. I got really good at what I did. Tarot, um, all of it, the whole nine, except I got a little darker than, than most people. One night, I, w I made spaghetti, and T and her daughter came over, and we were eating, and she said, Look, I think you're, um, you're too deep into this. Why don't you back up a little bit? Uh, and I didn't understand why she was saying this. She's the one that introduced me to it. I couldn't figure it out. Meanwhile, God had kept trying to get my attention, and I wasn't giving a minute to God. I was very loyal to what I was involved with, very faithful to the core. My kids mean everything to me, and I don't mean that in the um, normal, typical parental sense. I mean, my kids are my whole, my entire life, um, and that's there. There's no stretch or exaggeration to that. They're everything. I'll never forget it. August first, uh, 2015. My youngest son came up to me and said, "Mom, what's going on with my neck?" His lymph node on one side was swollen like a softball. We raced him to the emergency room, and they told us you might want to consult, uh, make an appointment with an oncologist. I was so upset, I vomited in my purse. When I got home, the very first thing I did was go into my dressing room, and I put a few things under my altar, and was going to manifest some things. I called on dark forces to help me with my child shameful shameful i was so deep into it that it didn't even dawn on me that god was trying to get my attention i looked in the mirror where my altar sat on my dresser and looking back at me was a demon i kid you not as i sit and breathe and it was laughing at me i fell on my face begging god for mercy i turned right back to god begging him for mercy it was not that easy I lost my house, I lost my car, I lost my job, I hit rock bottom. That day in the dressing room when I fell on my face begging God's mercy, I rededicated my life back to Him, back to Jesus Christ.
it was not as easy as praying and rededicating my life and God took me back into his arms it didn't happen that way with me I had to lose everything you know I lost my car my house my job nearly my child just to regain my relationship with Jesus Christ and sitting outside one day it was getting dark I heard a voice say I can give it all back you know exactly what you have to do just as clear as a bell when the lump was found on my son and we made the ear nose and throat specialist appointments the last appointment I had with that doctor he said I'm gonna give till October of 2016 at that time I believe it was maybe June or July he said and if it is not gone down we're gonna have to biopsy and I promise you as I sit here and breathe it was two weeks shy of the date that doctor had set for the biopsy my son woke up and his lump was gone I wanted to share this with you guys as it happened I'm sorry if it didn't flow or it doesn't flow to, to some folks' specs I know everybody's um, got a pet peeve anyway um, my point to all of it is this I stayed so angry with God and I, I really had no faith whatsoever even after he loved me enough to send me an angel for my son even after all of that stuff I was raped as a young teenager I lost my virginity raped by a grown man I felt totally abandoned by God I didn't want to hear anything about it but by me looking back and praying that prayer that I started praying out of the blue showed me more than anything he loved me so much that he's the one that put those words in my mouth not me he did it and I think that he allowed me to go through it to show me he loves me he was there with me through all of it the worst part of it the loneliest parts of it God never did leave me even when I left him and I'm so grateful and I'll I'll lose that stuff ten times over but I'll never lose my faith again and I'm so grateful for his glory his mercy his love his forgiveness and for keeping a grip on me when evil was much stronger than I was